So thanks to Tony for taking questions. You're welcome. <laughs>
bot. There, there is, there are those big bots, uh, they are aging really very much an opportunity. There are considerable benefits to gain from our aging population. And some other first now refer to the, this idea of the demographic dividend, you know, looking at older people, and how do you view older people? Uh, hugely important source of volunteering. Uh, our older population play, play vital roles as grandparents, as mentors, as guardians and custodians of our community institutions. And um, they want, they're, it's, it's, this may seem cynical, but they're a, a hugely important consumer group. And um, they can and often want to uh, work beyond the current retirement age or to gradualize it and uh, their, their retirement or to start up new businesses or to mentor. So it's about providing these opportunities and seizing these opportunities and, and tapping into the wealth of knowledge of all the people they know and love their communities. They understand the strengths and the potential of our communities. And there's a lifetime accumulated uh, base of expertise and talent there that needs to be tapped into. And all the people have a major role to play in making our communities great places to live in and to grow old in. And that's very much what this age friendly discovery reach over that program is very much about. Passing that voice of the young person and ensuring that it informs planning at a local level. So, as Tony said, we need to challenge our own as an understanding of aging, maybe looking at those possibly well placed intentions, but uh, depicted on the left, left hand side about aging as something to, to cope with and to bear with and to respond to. But there are opportunities there that we, we need to seize as well. So, uh, some kind of provocative questions there, hopefully. Um, but just, just to put the, the age friendly program in context a little bit, it is part of a worldwide WHO inspired movement uh, which tries to respond to those multi faceted opportunities and challenges that the aging presents. And if, uh, the, the ambition is to provide a structure and a set of supports which enable local authorities in particular to take the lead at the local level uh, to, uh, to lead, lead out on changing the thinking about aging. And how services are planned and delivered locally. It's you know, local is everything. We all live in our, in our village, our town, our county. And that's what we recognize as being as home. Um, so, as I said, it's, it isn't an initiative that was dreamed up on the uh, uh, jumping off the bus in front of the county manager in Longford or Lab. This is it's, it's very much inspired by this framework exercise. Led out by the WHO a, number, a short number of years ago, and I'm looking to tackle those, address those two key demographic changes: population aging and growing urbanization. And the Irish story began just a short number of years ago with the uh, uh, very much led by uh, uh, one of the organisations that brought together from later on this morning. Uh, it started in Dundalk, uh, led by, uh, under the leadership of the Netball Centre. Uh, uh, to put itself, um, uh, participated in the 2007 framework exercise for testing this approach to developing age friendly communities. And following on from that very successful approach, the then Lyon community manager uh, committed to developing Lyon as the first age friendly community. Committed uh, the partners across Lyon to commit to developing an age friendly multi agency. Strategy to respond to the needs and the voice of the, the, the young person at the local level. So, what does becoming an age friendly county, how does one go about it, an age friendly county or an age friendly city? There's a number of what would appear to be very simple, very logical steps, and as you'll hear in a couple of minutes, but there's some very, you know, we don't want to say modest, uh, practical initiatives that have been developed on top of these. But uh, modest and practical because often they come with little or no additional budget. They develop with many existing budget lines. It's very much about the voice of the older person, but it's centered around multi agency planning. So agencies coming come together, the local authority coming together with the health services, the government, call, the NGOs, the universities, and being informed by the voice of the older person. But these steps, the logic of these steps, might seem very practical and uh, very simple. Getting them all lines together. That's this kind of four line structure at the county level, led by the county manager, 
uh, that position, that leadership is all important. The county manager is able to invite you in his or her peers, the uh, manager of older people's services from the health service executive, the chief superintendent from the college of Chicago, the chief executives from the relevant NGOs and academic institutions, and even to secure a cohort of older people to, to gather that voice together. So the, the process uh, involves the formation of that senior level group that aligns. Uh, that group uh, goes out to capture the voice of the older person through a process of county wide consultation asking very simple, straightforward questions. What's it like in this town, this village, this county, as a place to live in? Uh, what's good about it? Uh, what needs to be improved? What can you as older people do to bring about those improvements? And what do the statutory and non-statutory agencies, what role do they have to play in this, in this piece? The findings from that consultation are brought back to that multi-agency group. And the ambition is that, yes, they respond to it what can we, the local authority, do? What can the, can the health services do? What can the agencies do? But I think, what can we do together? Um, to use that crude expression, we, we all stay in the game as players around this table. There's, we're looking for shared responses to shared problems. And some of the, those very simple models and examples that I'm going to show in a couple of minutes' time hopefully speak to that a little bit. And from there, the informal voice, the old person, uh, those agencies commit to developing county and age friendly county strategy and commit to being accountable to each other and to the local older population. And from there, the hard work starts and implementation uh, commences. So, what does age friendly mean? Um, it's, it's, this is the framework. It's very broad, it's very holistic, and that underpins the program. It provides a means to, to assess a decision of county as a place to grow uh, through the lens of the older person. Um, most importantly, though, it allows for or even demands creative solutions to respond to the needs of their time. So each, if, if one were to pick up the land of the county strategy, or the, the soon to be published needs of the county strategy, they're going to be quite different, reflective of, of the conditions and the needs and the interests of in those various different counties. So each county is able to put its own blueprint uh, on, on, the, on the issue. And very often, as you'll see in a couple of slides to come, very often relatively small, modest changes can improve lives at a local level. But again, local, the voice of the local older person is key to the process. Their voice is at the heart of it. They inform the development of the plan, and they are an equal player at a uh, high-level alliance table. The agencies come together, they hold each other to account, but the older people at the alliance table are an equal player. Their role is to ensure, yes, you've heard us correctly in the first place. Yes, our voice is informing the development of the local plan. But we're also going to hold you to account for the commitments that you make. And we also have a role to play as an older people's council or an older people's forum to deliver an action some of the <coughs> as part of the strategy itself. So what's happened? Maybe just a, a quick flavor. Um, where, where we are so, uh, so far to add the program we're very much standing on the successes of those early adopted sites, the uh, Loud, most certainly, uh, Fingal, Kilkenny, those that showed the, the drive, the commitment, the leadership to take this program on and make it uh, their own, but also from there the national program is effectively born. And so four years later, uh, this program has been adopted by 16 local authorities uh, on Ireland, and the ambition is that uh, within the next two to three years, the program will be adopted by all of the authorities across Ireland. We very much recognize that's only the start of the journey. Based on multi agency plan, that, as we all know, is complex. So it is, as we said, it's about starting that conversation back in the and trying to uh, get new ways of planning and new ways of thinking. Um, so, just to give you a little bit of flavor as to what's happening. And um, across that range of 16, uh, 17, 18, and 19 local authority areas, men's sheds have built uh, both shelters and park benches. Volunteers have been trained by the authorities for a long time to find pension boxes, visiting with more people in their own homes. Local authority engineers have gained over adults to inform the development of uh, local town plans and local county plans and area plans. Uh, local authority and um, 
by volunteers have led all control groups and uh, landscape and have regenerated home down areas uh, and parks to make them more accessible and attractive places to spend time. So thinking about the that eight domain framework, it provides a holistic means of looking at a place to live in and to grow up in. But it allows uh, that multi-agency group to put its own stamp on, on the issue. That it's not a, a generic approach. The economic angle might be very important. It's important to us all, but particularly important in some areas. I'm mindful that it's very much trying to capture the voice of the before end up. There's a lovely example from Claire in Ennis, uh, that, uh, recognizing that other people as, as consumers play a vital role in supporting uh, uh, local businesses and services, with keeping their communities uh, vibrant and, and healthy. A uh, group of transition uh, transition year students um, got together with a group of older people and produced uh, video evidence of the need for uh, longer crossing times uh, at the traffic lights. Um, they also persuaded taxi drivers and restaurant owners and business owners to provide a discount scheme for older people, which would grow their business at the same time. And together, that group of transition year students and the older people got together with the town council made a presentation and got the new organizations built into the, uh, the town and to area plan. And just another example coming from the thing of all uh, a friendly approach, and I think it speaks to that, uh, that, that crude expression of uh, players at the table having skin in the game. Um, the consultation process in thing of all identified, yes, we have a wonderful, uh, our, our, uh, strong, improving local transport service. We've got good national transport routes. The only people said it's costing me 60 and 80 euro to get back uh, to and from the local hospital uh, for my uh, appointments. And the, the very fact that at the Alliance table was the hospital manager, uh, representative from the HSE, and representative from the local authority. But the hospital manager is saying, well, actually, with a huge proportion or a significant proportion of our new shows are coming from the older cohort. And um, that does a bottom line effect on us as a business, if you like. And uh, the HSE and the local authority are, they would uh, say, we're, we seem to be in the transport game as well, but it's not our core business. The very fact that the Alliance table was a volunteer transport provider, there was, there was the presentations of a shared problem and a shared response for us. Could we not fund something together, a pilot transport? that would go out and pick up all the people in their own homes and around the community and get them to the local hospital all the time. In return, uh, in response to the local hospital, we configured this hospital appointments schedule to link in with that service. And so from a 60 or 80 euro taxi return, it came down to a 2, 3, or 4 euro uh, there back on the, on the health route. So on top of this, the evaluation uh, just recently evaluated. A uh, portion of new shows has come down very soon. So in fact, on the bottom line for the hospital, uh, the cost for participants is obviously a very significant reduction. Uh, <coughs> and there's a, a, a specific provider providing the service rather than a local authority or health service building with, with transportation, but maybe that's not their core line of business. So again, just a, a simple one of think response to a, a shared issue. This next one, Oprah, is really just maybe one to put on the radar because it's, it's one that I or we as a program would love to come back to on. We're very optimistic about it. Over older people remaining at home. So across a number of participating areas, and five to six sites across the country. Um, and the program would be supporting the rollout of this uh, of the Oprah program. But the addition is to, to support the old people who are living in their homes and communities for longer. So in each of the five to six sites, uh, uh, a multi-agency steering group uh, all together, uh, involving the local authorities, the health services, and the uh, voluntary uh, private organizations, uh, such as some of the representatives here, to provide a much wider range of uh, social and care support that would encourage our need and support for the people to stay living in their own homes for life. And in parallel to that, the understandable question is, your failure is in, where is the evidence? These are all the wonderful, admirable initiatives. We're very mindful of that. I think the last three or four years has been about creating a new form of thinking, a new form of planning, a new discipline, if you like. We're playing, we're, we're looking to capture the story, the evidence. So the upper initiative, 
uh, the uh, uh, professor of uh, health science, uh, Charles Long, will be leading out on a uh, capture of the research um, running along in parallel with this process. And so that's something we'd like to come back to you and share with you. I think I've got two or three minutes. Okay, so let's say when the program is adopted uh, by any county, uh, we don't try and second guess what's going to come up through the consultation, but there are a couple of issues that invariably do. Uh, information being one, uh, as in, gosh, not so much there's a lack of information, but it's a complex web of information that so many provide. I don't know what I'm entitled to, or who do I approach for what, or how do I engage. The other aspect is the intergenerational one. Maybe in the 50, 60, 70s of young, it's 10, 20, 30 years since I really engaged in with somebody in their teens, 20s, and 30s. So, um, loneliness, isolation, uh, or other issues. This was just one approach taken in modern uh, in intergenerational health projects uh, based around a box in the county. So, in modern and park across, a group of 12 to 18 year olds got together with a group of between 15 and 70, age, ages 15 and 70, uh, across an eight week program, two and a half hours a week, engaging on health contact boxing, uh, modules on biology and health community and lifestyle. So, we provide social engagement and opportunity for different generations to come together and learn and develop as a result. And they're looking at, at building that up and uh, introducing it to the team one program. Uh, mental health, uh, positive mental health. Understand, uh, there are different segments that are more challenging to engage with. Older men, certainly, would be one of them. Uh, the age friendly program wouldn't uh, pretend to or look to claim the men's sheds as their own, but the men's sheds proved to be the most relevant response to the initiatives. Again, the live program uh, looked to uh, use the men's uh, sheds model to respond to some of the issues and engage. With this hard to reach audience. Uh, two sheds have been introduced in the door, two sheds in front of and they proved to be a very useful, very attractive means of engaging with the old person. Uh, Combating isolation, but build, building friendships. Uh, but also, um, anecdotal suggested uh, that's the reduction in uh, uh, policy, um, that uh, 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 use of medication. But also just like social outage that people weren't really leaving that house for me to leave and they come to the, the men's sheds two or three times a week, which is very popular. Um, last one, Sarah. <laughs> um, information. I said we never find second guess on the program or they just never find second guess what is the issue. But information and that gosh there's a relevant uh, range or myriad of statutory agencies out there uh, provide information there's a complex where but Things I'm supposedly entitled to, the things I'd love to engage with locally, but how do I have access to it? In the land of growth, we look at this really simple question. Even simple often is often the answer. The farmers' initiative. So, four farmers have been set up. This attractive space that older people can come into, the cup of tea, chat, find out what's happening in my local area. Can I get information on housing and transportation? Our opportunities to engage in volunteer, and this is one that's on to. So, look, I think that's a little quick flavor of the program where it's at, the ambition for it, but very much recognizing that four years in, we're still at the beginning. Multi agency planning, really complex, but some of the responses are very really simple, very low cost, and it's about trying to capture the evidence and build up this story and strengthen it. So I think it's, it's, it's a key response to some of the issues that Tony was talking about, particularly around uh, that whole society called government approach and its capture and it's like it happy and strength. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jim. Some really good examples there simple, practical and modest initiatives that can really enhance uh, people's lives. Okay, ne uh, next up, uh, time has arrived, and John is up. Will we try and get you both up on stage? We want to give him a chair with you, because then we have the panel ready to go. Because I'm determined to get you to your conference. Yes, please. I think we're frozen in here. <laughs> okay, is, is, is there anything? Is there anything?
Okay. 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 Okay.